Hey guys, Paul Hewitt, Hewitt Technologies here. Just want to talk real quick about our new Gen 2 bypass kits for the secondary air systems on the Toyota Lexus vehicles. Um, we'll do a little quick install of these. Um, really straightforward. But first, I kind of want to talk to you about our new units and how they work. Um, so unlike our other, our V36, our V54 units uh, for the older vehicles, these are mostly aimed at the newer vehicles. So anything 2012 up to the current model year, 2019, you're gonna use one of these. Um, basically on all 14 and newer vehicles, some 2012 and newer, the secondary air injection system will run at shutdown, which is not something we can prevent from happening with our older units. So there was a need for a new solution. Um, with this one, it's a much more elegant solution, much easier to install. Instead of just tricking the system not to run to get around those trouble codes, um, what we do is basically emulate the system itself. Um, the computer is going to talk to our unit and our unit is basically going to tell the computer that everything is operating the way it's supposed to be when it's told to. Um, plug and play operation. This is, our, this is an 08 Tundra 5.7 liter. This vehicle has two air injection control drivers on it. It has two pumps. They're independently controlled here. Um, but basically what we're going to do, we're going to replace the bank two air injection driver here with this unit. So this unit is designed pretty much kind of kind of exactly like the original. It kind of looks like it. It's it's intended to mount in the same spot. Um, so how this one installs, you've got on the on the 5.7 liters and most of the V8s, you have two of these connectors that are going to replace. We're going to disconnect these two six-pin connectors, connect to these, and then there's a harness that comes with this it connects to here, and then this harness will actually go to the air switching valves on this vehicle. So uh, we don't care about the pumps, we don't care if they're there, we don't really care about the valve solenoids, uh, we don't really actually care about the air injection drivers being here either. So the way this works, um, the only thing we need and the only thing the computer still needs are the good pressure sensors. So each of these air switching valves has a pressure sensor built into the top of it. Um, if one of the factory harness will plug in line with the air switching valve and the factory harness for that air switching valve to utilize those factory pressure sensors that are part of those air switching valves. If one of those is damaged though, we do have a kit add-on called a pressure sensor options, what we're calling it for now. And basically, here that, here that is. It is a different Toyota factory pressure sensor that we use. We source these straight from Japan. And this will plug into this harness where you would normally plug it into the air switching valve. So instead of using the pressure sensor that's in the air switching valve, you would be using this pressure sensor to take its place. Again, that's only needed if one of those pressure sensors is damaged or if you wanted to actually remove the air switching valves. Um, on the 5.7 liter, pretty much unless you've already got the intake out or you've got the engine out, you're just going to leave those valves in place. They're pretty tricky to to get to to make the connections to start with so removing them is really not worth it unless you're building a custom vehicle or, or custom off-road vehicle or something like that um, so well, that's that's that uh, next we'll just kind of cover the installation here really simple like I said we're going to dismount and replace this this secondary air injection system driver this is the bank 2 one there's a there's a bracket here we're going to we're going to take this whole thing loose Before we do, we're going to go ahead and disconnect these. Get all these disconnected. Be careful not to pull on the wire itself. So, because we're going to replace this front one with our unit, we're going to tape off this, this connector here. There's actually 12 volts from the battery through a fuse right here. We're working on some custom plugs just so you can plug that off and it's safe. It's not going to flop around and do anything. But we're going to take some tape for now and just tape this one off. This this one, we're going to just plug back on to this one. It's not going to be used. It's just going to sit there and not do anything. But it'll be connected to the factory air injection driver so it's just safe. Uh, just, we're going to take this off here just, to, just, to, just in case. get that closed off. And it's probably not the prettiest job, but, but it'll work. 
just to make sure nothing nothing touches that 12 volt 50 amp supply from straight from the battery so we'll just keep that plugged off and then we'll just tuck that down out of the way when we're ready so these both of these mount to a bracket that mounts down to the fender itself there's just one little 10 millimeter bolt that holds the, both of them together or holds both of them to the fender crud down in there. Might want to spray some PB Blaster on that if it's rusty nasty or anything like that just to make it a little bit easier. So here is both of our both of our air injection drivers. We're going to unbolt this one. It's just a little sub bracket bolts on there. All right. So this is the bank two air injection driver. We're going to replace this one. You can tell this one's brown. Um, she's got two Phillips screws holding these on. Alright, just set that aside. You're not going to need that anymore. Um, the kit will come with some stainless steel hardware to make, make the uh, to mount the module. So you're just going to put this back just like this was here. So we're going to mount this just like that. Right in the same spot. Drop you a nut in the little well there. Get that started. Well, and we do include some extra hardware just in case because you do drop stuff. You get three instead of two. Right. Well, we'll hold that nut. You don't have to tighten these down super, super tight, but you know, good and snug. These will also work with the flex fuel vehicles. That was another reason we had to develop these. Um, and some of the earlier 08s, there was an undocumented uh, change to a couple of the, a couple of the vehicles we ran across that would do the same thing, where they would try to run the system at shutdown. And that's, like I said, that's not something that our previous units could take care of. So. This is just the solution that you will need for the newer vehicles. Um, our V36 and V54s, perfectly viable options. Um, the downside of those is if you do have a bad pump motor or a bad solenoid valve or something like that, you'll need extra kit add-ons, whereas this doesn't require any kit add-ons for those sort of things. I'm just gonna get this bolted right back down. Let's bolt this down.
And for the sake of the video, I think I'm just going to put one back in there, but that gives you the idea. Make sure you get all those back in there and tighten them down so it's not going to go anywhere. Alright, so our module our module's mounted, it's installed. We're just going to make the connections here that we need. Alright, so what we're going to do, we're just going to reconnect this black, black connector back to the bank one, just so that's held out of the way. And then you'll notice you've got, these are keyed, black, black six pin to black six pin. Make sure those line up and go on there real nice. You should hear good click. These are sealed factory quality connectors. And click. And then you can just kind of let that be. We're gonna tuck this down. You could zip tie that or tape it back if you wanted to. Usually it'll just tuck down right there. Keep that out of the way. We're going to take our harness. Now this is the harness that goes out to the vacuum switching valves. I'm sorry, not the vacuum, the air switching valves. Uh, these are custom for each vehicle for the links and locations. On this harness, this is the 5.7, 4.6 liter version. Uh, you've got one six pin connector that will connect to our bypass unit here. Nice click, and then you'll notice you've got four other connectors here. Um, these two, first here, this will connect to your bank one air switching valve on your pass on your driver side here, and these two will go over to the other side of the engine to connect to the passenger side. These are intentionally left long like this on the 5.7 liter, so that you can get them down the back of the uh, engine intake to get to those air switching valves, so you have a lot easier access to make those connections. Okay, here we are. We got our tech Russell here. Actually used to work for Toyota for a little bit. He's gonna help us with these, this install on this. We've got our cable harness running right here. It's just set there temporarily. Those two are gonna go back here to this air switching valve and these two are gonna go back to this air switching valve. Uh, it's kind of tricky to get to them. So we're gonna, I think we're gonna take that little, this vacuum line, there's a bolt here and there's a bolt here. Just to kind of get that out of the way so we can get our hands back out, back out in there. to give us some room. Um, it's really hard to get a shot of these to show you exactly so we'll try to do a, a really good job in the installation instructions to give you a much better idea of where these air switching valves are and how to get to those connectors. On all of the 5.7 liters though they're back here behind the engine they're down there they're like this and both of the connectors kind of are at this angle. It's this same connector on the factory harness that you'll have to do. You'll have to get down there, pinch that, and pull that off, trying not to pull on the wires of the factory harness on both of those. Um, this will plug into the factory harness that you disconnect from the air switching valve itself, and then this will plug into the air switching valve in place of that factory connector. Um, and what, what that does is it just lets us use the pressure sensors that are built into those air switching valves. He's going to get that one. I'm going to try to get up in here and get this one off the driver's side. This is definitely the hardest part of the 5.7 liter, unfortunately. Um, all the other engines are, are really, really easy compared to this. You just kind of have to feel around down there and get a good idea of what you're looking at or trying to feel for first. The hard part is just getting pressure on that tab on this one to get it to come loose. All right, there's that one. I don't know if you can see this or not. Here's that connector. So I'm gonna route this harness from the module over there and then plug this into the factory harness. Nice click. And then I'm going to plug this onto the driver's side air switching valve. And it 
that's when you have it turned the right way. And that one there. There you go. And that's clicked on. So that's the, the driver's side install. And on the other side, the passenger side, there is a piece of the main engine harness that's kind of in the way. Um, you can you can try to move that out of the way. There's a clip. You can pull it off that clip. Hardest part is really just getting that tab to depress. Get your fingers on it and get that tab to depress and pull that connector off without uh, pulling on the wires. So a little bit more about the bypass module on the Gen 2s. Um, pretty much the only reason this won't work for you is if the wiring from the air switching valves to the computer is damaged or the computer itself is damaged um, or we have a damaged pressure sensor. In that case, if it is just a damaged pressure sensor, like I said, we do have the pressure sensor options. And instead of plugging the connector he's got right here into the uh, factory air switching valve, we would plug this one into it. Uh, this is another factory Toyota sensor. This nipple here does not connect to anything. That'll stay open to the atmosphere. Um, with this, all it'll need to do is read the atmospheric pressure. Um, you can just zip tie this out of the way so it doesn't flop. If you want to, you can just stick a piece of spare uh, vacuum line on this and just leave it open, and that'll help keep debris and water out of there, but it needs to be open to the atmosphere. All right, we've got that, uh, that clicked on there, and then just come back. All you gotta do, you probably wanna put a zip tie or two on this to dress that up a little bit. Cover back on. We'll go back and snip those wire tops. Cover back on. This kit still does need the block off plates. Uh, we've covered that in a separate section, um, or we'll, it's another piece of this video. Uh, we'll tag on to it or have it in one of our other videos. But um, that's the full install. The module is super easy to install, sort of the 5.7 liter getting to the back to those. In the instructions, we have you disconnect the negative battery terminal before you start. That'll clear the codes. If you do it that way, just keep in mind when you start the vehicle after you're done, it can run really rough or even stumble or stall until it has time to rebuild some of that tuning info. Um, we're going to use a scan tool to clear the codes. Um, sometimes if you disconnect this stuff within a certain period of time of turning the ignition off, you can still get some codes. Uh, clear the codes. At that point, you shouldn't have anything left code-wise. No more limp mode from the secondary air system. And every time the computer is going to tell this thing to run, the module is going to do what it's told to do, and it's going to tell the, mod the computer that everything's okay. Um, this will actually let the emissions monitor complete. Um, we do only sell these for off-road or exempt use only, so keep that in mind. Um, but there you go.